design for business continuity. We have two sub-modules in this, high availability and BCDR, which is business continuity disaster recovery. We did cover designing a highly available solution in a brief. And in this video, we are going to talk about design for backup. So under BCDR, if we see business continuity disaster recovery, it, it breaks down into two sub-modules, backup and disaster recovery. So before we go ahead and uh, start talking about designing Azure Backup, let's try to understand uh, the difference. Well, backup is point in time copy of data stored in the region or maybe replicated to another region for redundancy. But in case needed, it would restore in the same region or same environment. However, disaster recovery is planning to run workload in another region or zone, basically from another location or region in case something big happened, like a natural mishap, disaster, which hit the entire data center or zone or region. So in that situation, you try to fail over to a different region, which is not affected by the disaster. So that's a, that's a basic difference between these two, but both are used for the business continuity. So there are certain things we need to, we need to keep in mind before develop the BCDR strategy, which is applicable for both, almost both. There are a few points that we can talk about. So let me write down these points first, <clears throat> which are that you need to think of what are your workloads and their usage? What are, what are the usage pattern? What are the availability matrices? What are the recovery matrices? Okay, then we also need to think about uh, workload availability targets. And SLA, of course. So these are few things that we need to keep in mind or we should discuss we should be aware before come up with the BCDR strategy. So these are the questions. Let's try to understand these questions in a little more detail, which will help us to understand the topic better. Well, what, what are your workload and their usage? What this will help you to determine? Well, we know each workload probably has different requirements for availability, scalability, data consistency, and disaster recovery. We all know that, right? We do have different kind of applications. We do have mission critical application, which needs a high availability. We do have an application where the target audience come and goes, the, the, the user traffic, can increase, can decrease. So scalability is the need. So it depends the kind of workload we have. Accordingly, we need to plan the backup and DR, okay? Now the usage pattern. Usage patterns can determine your requirement, uh, identify differences in requirement during both critical and non-mission critical or non-critical, right? Mission critical may need higher uptime or redundancy, and you could use multiple regions for that. But non-mission critical could be okay in a single region to minimize the cost. Then we have uh, availability metrics. So what are availability metrics? Well, you need to learn two new terms here if you're not already familiar with. These are MTTR and MTBF. Well, MTBF is how long a component can reasonably expect to last between outages. It's uh, mean time between failures, 
and MTTR is the average time it takes to restore a component after a failure. Use these metrics to determine where you need to add redundancy and to determine SLA for your customers. Now, you, you might think these sounds like RTO and RPO, but these are the availability metrics. And RTO and RPO are the recovery metrics. These are called the recovery metrics. So what are RPO and RTO? Well, RTO uh, is recovery time objective, is the maximum acceptable time uh, for your apps, which can be unavailable following an uh, incident. And RPO is the maximum duration of data loss that is acceptable during a disaster. We need to come up with this certain number before planning the DR. So we need to know RTO and RPO. Now, there is one more term along with these two that we should be aware is RLO, which is uh, recovery level objective. RLO determines the granularity of recovery. In other words, whether you must be able to recover a server farm, a web app, a site, or just a specific item. Like in backup, you do have a, a high RLO, you can go and recover a file, but in case of ASR for disaster, you just simply go ahead and fail over the entire VM, right? So to determine these values, you need to conduct a risk assessment. Ensure that you understand the cost and risk of downtime or data loss in your organization. Because everybody wants high availability 24 seven, but somebody has to pay for it, right? So you need to do that assessment. You need to find what kind of workload it is. You need to find uh, DR is more cost costly as compared to uh, going four hours of downtime accordingly, risk assessment. Now, what are the availability targets? <clears throat> to help ensure that your app architecture meets your business requirement, define target SLAs for your each workload. Account for the cost and complexity of meeting availability requirements in addition to application dependencies. Well, in Azure, uh, the SLA describes the Microsoft commitment for uptime and connectivity. If the SLA for a particular service is 99.9%, you should expect the service to be available 99.9% .9 of the time. In previous highly uh, high availability video, I explained you need to think about all the components which creates or helps or in, is there in your architecture. Because if a workload requires 99.99% uptime, but depends on a service with a 99.9% SLA, that service can be a single point of failure in the system, right? So these are very important uh, requirement or considerations you should have in mind. If these are not available already, you should go and discuss with your customer and come up with the plan uh, for the backup. Now, let's design Azure Backup, design for Azure Backup. So the Azure Backup service uses Azure resources for short-term and long-term storage. So Azure Backup, it's a, it's a cloud native and uh, it do have short-term and long-term storage with the help of Azure Backup. Now, let's see where or what all we can back up with, with Cloud Native Azure Backup. Though it says Azure, but it can also back up your own premises workload, maybe other cloud or Azure VM. It can also back up uh, <clears throat> uh, Azure file share, not restricted to the VM only. If you have SQL running on VM, it can back up that. Even the SAP HANA running on VM, it can back up that. Uh, so it has a huge capability. And Azure Backup can replace your existing on-premises or offsite backup solution with a cloud-based solution that's reliable, secure, and cost competitive. So, 
Azure Backup organize your backup data in a storage entity, which we call Vault, right? So Vault is nothing, it's a, it's a storage entity and, and all the data that Azure Backup backs up throws in this Vault. Now, we need to, we need to consider a few points uh, to create this recovery, this, this vault, this backup vault, and how we can design it, right? So a storage vault not only backup copies, recovery points, but also backup policies. And policies is something that you need to sit with your customer and design as per the need of the workload, all these terms that we discussed. Now, design for the backup, we, we have covered like what all things we should be aware of, what all things Azure Backup can backup. Now we are going to think about how we need to create the vault, how many vaults is needed, what all access capabilities that we can have or apply it on the backup. So let's consider a few things. If your workloads are all managed by a single subscription and single resource, then you can use a single vault. If your workloads are spread across subscription, then you can create multiple vaults. Use separate vaults for Azure Backup or ASR. If you need consistent policy across vaults, then you can apply Azure policy. So till now we can say we design vault as per subscription, we can use Azure policy for consistency across walls, or we can have we can protect and manage vault with the help of RBAC as well. It is <clears throat> RBAC is a, uh, applicable on 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 backup with through Azure AD. Uh, we can also use redundancy option. We can have LRS and GRS. We could have the backed up item into GRS, like geo multiple regions, you can do that, achieve a higher level of redundancy. So these things you need to keep in mind and as per the answers of these questions, as per the workload that we are backing up, as per the need, as per the requirement of the backup policies. And these are the other considerations that we need to keep in mind, we can come up with the backup design. Well, thank you for watching and you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.